Next year it's 500 years since uh, the Reformation and uh, the, the whole idea of grace was the, was the great theme for Luther. But um, actually for us, we still find grace really difficult and actually grace and the Father are linked, you know, that the Father just loves us and so we live in response to his love. We don't live to earn his love. And I think that's provocative. The idea that you could just be loved as you are right now for no other reason than just because God chooses to love you is so contrary to our experience. Am I to just sit on my sofa for the rest of my life and say, oh, you know, God loves me. Well, I could do that and he'll still love me, but that's, then I wouldn't have understood his love because his love is he wants me to prosper, to be the best that I can be, to flourish. But human flourishing comes from the place of God loving us in the first place. You know, when we try to find our worth from within, Actually, it's, it, it, we know ourselves to not be worth, we know ourselves not to be good enough. We, we often think of ourselves and we think deep inside we have this, this sense of it, it's, it's not okay. And um, even those times when we think we can make it on our own, we actually need something external to ourselves to say, you're worth something. So I have two boys and um, the, the thing about the father that I've learned from having children is, is one is they long, they really want my approval. So every night one of my boys, he brings to me Lego he's made and he's like, do you want to see what I've made? And we say, you know, we always say yes. We always like, yeah, it's amazing. It's so good. And so I think that we all need someone to say that. But also, we also need to know that someone's on our side. And I asked my other boy the other day what daddy should do if he ever has problems. And he says, I should smash them to pieces. Well, of course I can't do that. But um, they're understanding something about the father's heart that actually the father fights for us. And so we all need a father because we need to be approved of. But we also need to know that someone's on our side and that in the end, that's what the father does. He destroys our enemies and he makes a way for, it for us in our lives. We either struggle because we um, can't do it, so we can't be holy, we can't be, so we give up, or we just keep trying and it never leads to satisfaction. So I, I think for me, um, yeah, of, of course I've had to wrestle with it, with it like all, all people. Every day you look yourself in the mirror and say, I'm, I'm here by grace, Jesus died for my sins, he set me free. And I think if we can do that, we preach the gospel to ourselves every day, then um, we, can live in, we can actually live in freedom. I think the good news is that God isn't angry with you. And I, I think that lots of people feel as though God is an angry God, a tyrant God in the sky waiting to smelt, smite them in some way and they've got to just keep him on side. And I think the good news of the gospel is God isn't angry with us. That he, he's, Yes, he says he doesn't like sin, he hates sin, but he loves us. And um, do you know, it's like the yes and the no. God says yes and he says no. He says yes to us and he says no to the sin in our world. But he says yes to us. And I think that's what's happening in the gospel over and over again. Jesus is saying yes to people, no to sin. And on the cross, I think Jesus is saying yes to us and no to what we've done with the world. So I would say the, go the gospel is the yes of, yes of God to us as individuals and the no of God to sin and brokenness in the world, to sickness as well. For me, this parable sum summarizes the gospel. Right now, it's really important to me. It's, it's a place to keep going to. Um, I think it's going to be the heart of the church we're planting. Um, yeah. <laughs>